Greetings and welcome to Smart Watch Ticks. It's an exciting day. We have a brand new box in here and we are going to open it to reveal, no doubt, a smart watch. Now, we've been reviewing a lot of, I'd call them flagship watches, these big Android 5.1 round exotic do everything kind of watches. This channel also presents tethering watches, the less expensive kind that mm, tend to connect with your um, cell phone to receive and place phone calls and good stuff like that. Well, what we have today is a tethering watch with a twist. At least that's what it looked like. It had a twist. Let's take a look and see what we've got. Wow, it just keeps going and going, doesn't it? It's one of these models here. Nicely packaged. Whoa. All right, box within box. Wow, there you go. Can you tell from the cover that there's something different? A back button, <laughs> a back arrow. And look at that band. This is not your typical dress watch. No, in fact, this looks like it's really a rugged outdoors yeah, heart rate monitor. Let's pull off the protective screen. Enter, it said down there, it looks like a button. A lot of other little buttons going across the bottom too as well, or little dots. Wow, okay. It's a uh, cloth, looks like you could get it wet kind of a, a band. What else, oh, USB connector. So it's a direct hookup for charging, which actually I like a lot better than the Docks you have to attach. What's oh, a deep one too, with a waterproof protection, and one single knob. Looks like it's a button and it twists. And here we go. Wow, really teeny little case. I'm guessing a screwdriver to take the screws off on the back. What do you think? Oh, there's more. No, it's the cable. Okay. A USB cable, obviously we would need that, wouldn't we? A ribbon cable type too. Huh, oh wow. Have you ever seen one that long? That's why you have this specialized cable so that when you plug it in, it'll reach all the way. Let's verify that. Yep, yep, you need that long, deep connectivity to be able to charge it. And charge it we will, and then we'll be back and turn it on for a first look. We are all charged up and ready to go. As we turn the watch on, I'd like to introduce you to a new supplier that's joining us, uh, supplying us this N10 Business Outdoor Sports Smart Watch with a heart rate monitor and compass, which is the exciting thing that we want to play with here. It's in the process of connecting right now over here to uh, Funduware. I am not going to do my messages or my contacts because you guys don't need to see that, but it's doing the linking process so that it's getting connected. Uh, lightinthebox.com, brand new supplier. There will be links in the show notes to this watch. Here it is in gold. We have the black model here and uh, it has Two watch faces. It's not one of those with a lot of options for watch faces. We have an analog and a digital. We'll show you those in a minute. In the meantime, how about a quick look at the specs? It's um, your basic smart, smart watch. It tethers, like I said, to Funduware, which means you have all of the possibilities there. These are the onboard languages using Bluetooth uh, 4.0, a 1.3 inch 240 by 240 screen, and so forth. Okay? Available in black, silver, and gold, and definitely a really nice band. I'm not seeing waterproof uh, listed. However, the way it's built with that protection, this band, and it looks really sealed, microphone port there, I'm guessing it's definitely at least splash proof. And if I can find any waterproof info on it, I'll put that in the show notes down below, okay? Let's take a run through it, see what we've got. When we touch it, um, it lights it back up a little bit brighter. I've got it set for the longest time, 50 seconds, that it'll stay on. 
If you have it off and you activate the feature, you can twist it and it <clears throat> should come on. There it is. When you swipe to the side or you hit the bot bottom button, you get three pages that are laid out in a circular format. That's the second one, and that's the third one. We come back here, and of course, Bluetooth lets you synchronize and do all your Bluetooth settings to get yourself all set up. That thing lets you enable or disable a power saving mode. So I'm presuming you can get some good long life out of it if you enable it. I have it disabled for the video. Here we have ringtone choice of mute or vibration. And it's actually vibrating right now. Of course, you can't hear it. There is no sound in this watch, strictly vibration or mute. Those are your options. Over here we have the uh, sleep monitor, so you can turn it on and track your sleep time and clear the history. Enable or disable the sleep switch, which starts that. Here's your results, as a typical day would be. Of course, it's zero for everything for today. And then you can clear history as well from there. Your basic sleep monitoring we see on a lot of these. Here's our pedometer. Now, what's really cool about the pedometer is you can set your step setting. Uh, how long is your step? Is it exactly two feet, 24 inches? Set it and you're saved. When you do that and you set your weight in pounds, because we have this set for English uh, measurements right now. We'll leave it at 130. Um, then you can go into the pedometer and start tracking. And now it's going to start monitoring and tracking the steps. And it'll give you your miles and calories burned based on your stride and your weight. So more accurate than most, but of course the step number is what you're going to want if you want to transfer that to some other app, right? We have settings over here including the backlight, which you can go as low as 10 seconds, as high as 50. Your unit setup for Imperial or metric. The turning on or off by raising the watch. If you want to conserve power, you turn that off. And the overall about watch, which tells you the version that we've got and what we're running. It's an N10B, this particular watch. And that's it for settings. Over here we have the compass. This is cool. This is why I brought this one in. And folks, it's accurate too. North is where the red is pointing right now. Um, this is not seen on many, if any, watches, especially being accurate like this. So being a really nice outdoorsy sports watch, tethering watch, working with fundu wear, and an onboard compass, that brought this one over here and worthy of taking a look at. You don't see the layout around the dial that much. It says north, south, west, and east. Of course, on the gold version, it's very, very clear, um, but it's much more subdued on the black version with the green band. This looks like a little higher class, more dressy watch. This is definitely your outdoor sports band. It's got a compass. Isn't that cool? Well, we outlasted our 50 seconds. There we go. And at the bottom, we've got uh, two different type of uh, watches. You've seen the analog. Let's do the digital. And then you can take a look at what you got there. So you have digital time. It's AM. There's the date. You notice it stays bright for just a few seconds, then goes dimmer. You can still see it. And if you want it brighter in the sunlight, you just touch it. You have messaging, which you can touch here directly to go to messaging. And you have that button which is where you would switch to analog or digital. I'm going to leave it in digital for now. Okay. Have we done the first circle, including Bluetooth in the middle? This is where you would sync, do your Bluetooth settings, and distance alert is where, if you enable that, um, it'll start vibrating if you are too far away from your tethered Bluetooth phone. All right? That's that uh, anti-loss feature, typically, that you see. Page two, we have, here it gets fun. Now watch this, folks. We have temperature. Um, I presume it's monitoring, like if you put it on, it's going to show you the uh, temperature of your skin. It's not 97.4 where I'm in, at right now. I put it in the 80s, probably maybe, mid-80s. Uh, so the measurement 
not sure how accurate and not sure what it's actually measuring. But there is a thermometer. So we have a compass and we have a thermometer. Numbers. Here we have a relative altimeter, which if we reset it to zero, if you're hiking up or down, it should give you your altitude change. Now, that's based on the barometric pressure. Oh, it's already moving. See, look at that. I have not moved, and it's saying I'm jumping between all these numbers up and down. Uh, I would say look for the big numbers. You know, if you're going up or down a thousand feet, then plus or minus two or three is nothing. But um, it is bouncing around, which is interesting. Reset. And now it's off. I guess that's how you toggle it on and off as well. Oh, no. There, it kicked in again. Okay. So it's live measuring the altitude based on change in barometric pressure, which is right here. There's the current barometric pressure in this watch. Pretty sophisticated for an overall out-of-the-box tethering kind of a watch. It's got more things it's measuring than we normally see. Um, I guess I'm going around this way this time, so let's keep down here. These are the installed languages that you have available. Quite a good selection of languages. We're going to stick with English. I think we could just leave it, but I'll go ahead and switch it. And here's where we set the date and time and the time format, 12 or 24 hour. Of course, if it's tethered, it's automatically going to pull the time and date from your phone. And this one is the remote camera capability, which they say you can use front or rear camera, but I haven't um, had success with that. I can try the front camera. It says it's loading. It switches the camera on. There's the floor. Not much in focus. Um, what have we got? There's the box it came in. Stuff like that. If I want a picture, I just simply touch the button down below. It says capturing, and it captures that picture on the phone. And when I leave the app, it switches the phone back to Funduware. Okay. And that's the uh, remote camera capability. We've done all of this stuff, and this is the one where you um, can connect to the watch. Whoa, and it crashes the app. <laughs> and I'm not quite sure what it's actually doing now. It, it should be uh, remote. Uh, there you go, telling you that it's connected or disconnected. There's an example of a notification coming in, how it comes in and you can read it. Not quite sure again what this was. I thought supposed to just make it vibrate. No, the only thing it does is it comes back and it says, unfortunately, it has crashed. So not sure what we're doing right there. Um, but that's relaunching the app, I believe. I think it was supposed to make a tone uh, come out. This is where you activate the sound on the uh, phone. If you've lost it, you can locate the phone. But it doesn't seem to be working in its current implementation. The last page, stopwatch with lap times. No, just reset. Okay, it's just on, off, or reset. No lap times on this particular one. Does that take us back? No, that activates it on and off down there, that button. So we have to hit the side one to come back. And here we have, this is the uh, notification section. The latest notification, it says one of one, not sure if it'll show more than one. The heart rate monitor, which is on the back. Eh, it looks like a spot of something underneath there, but that might just be the diode. Let's start it. You get the nice bright green. Put a finger on it, see what we get. Heart rate monitors are interesting beasts because they don't seem to be uniform in their performance. And uh, I take them with a grain of salt, really. Usually the best is to get multiple readings. And again, the screen is really dim right now. It's reading 86, 88. It started at 92. Now it's at 90. It's kind of bouncing all over the place. Um, and I don't think my pulse is that high. So... Not sure, but it does actually do a uh, pulse rate. It doesn't change to uh, any kind of uh, 
history either. So you might be able to sync it with the Fundu app and get the latest uh, pulse rate reading on the Fundu app, but um, it doesn't seem to show you a history on the watch. Yeah, and we're trying to reconnect to the Fundu app after that uh, mishap back there. This is where we set the LCD backlight. It's also available in the settings. This is a basic, whoops, basic calculator, which does all your standard calculating features. Yeah, okay. And this is where you can change your units to metric or imperial. And we are running imperial right now because we're in the US. And this is your phone book. Now, let me tell you a bit about this, because it took a while to figure this one out. When you synchronize it with your phone book, all your contacts come in here. You touch a contact, and you can get more information, and that includes their phone number. When you touch on the phone number, you can uh, get a button that says call. You press call, and it will activate calling on your uh, phone as long as you got your SIM card and everything in there. And then the phone will place the call for you. That's the only way you have of calling. We do not have anywhere in these apps the standard call uh, icon that you could tap and get the keyboard layout and tap in a phone number to call. So the calls are restricted to your contacts only and you have to access them through that button. But it will allow you to make a call from your phone and you can speak and hear from your watch the contents of that phone call, like you can with any of these tethering watches that run the Fundoware app. This is where you add uh, your alarm clock, what time you want it, how often you want it to repeat, and you can have it either vibrate only or mute. And I guess with mute, it'll light up the screen, but it's not going to vibrate uh, to tell you. And other than the center, which is a calendar that just simply shows you the days of the month, a very limited calendar, that's all that we've got on that page. So we covered everything here. We've covered everything here, right? We have covered everything here. The sedentary monitor, did we do that where you can... Remind every 20 minutes, turn it on and off. Um, it'll vibrate to get you to get up and take your medicine or take a stretch bake, whatever you're setting it for. That's the sedentary reminder. Yeah, we kind of stopped after that thing crashed. And then we're back up to our temperature, which is really hot in here, 99.1, uh, unlikely. And all of the things on there. All right, let's see if we can resolve what's going on with that phone calling stuff, SIM card, and uh, speaker issue. Well, I did a little bit of testing for you guys. Uh, I took it out, and I went down, and I calibrated that uh, altitude thing, and then I went up and down some hills, and indeed, it did go up and down like it was supposed to, and it seems pretty accurate. I know one hill's about 300 feet high, and sure enough, it came out to be just about 300 feet, so... The altitude thing works. Here we go, looking at the inside of the watch. Wow, there's a lot of extra space in here. There's the charging port. Tiny little battery. They could have put a really big battery. There's the uh, heart rate monitor. The one button right there, and you can see it just goes and makes contact with the little plate right there, so the twisty does nothing. Um, it's got a rubber grommet, which is going to be a pain to try to put this back on and make sure it's correct. It looks like it's looping up over the edge there, and, and it's come down a little bit here. So I'll have to check that when I put it back. There we go. Now, the bad news thing. When I tried to do the phone call testing, I could see that, well, there's no way to call out except through the dialer, right? We mentioned that. However, when you're on a call, and I received a call... Um, I tried to switch to the watch. The software looks perfect. It looks like it's switching to the watch. There's a volume control. You can go up and down. Everything's perfect, but look, there's no speaker. So even though the software works for tethering phone calls, you will not be able to hear anything. 
And I don't know if you can speak either. You know, I'm not sure that that thing's a microphone there. That may be the port for the air to come in to do the air pressure to calibrate the altitude based on the barometric pressure. There's nothing else that would use a microphone. Um, so I don't know. Uh, definitely phone calls are not the forte for this watch. But if you want something that gives you the altitude, the compass, and um, the thermometer, remember I said it was reading really high? Uh, and it was. Um, what I did is I opened the refrigerator and tossed it in the refrigerator to see what would happen. Did it stay the same or did it drop? And it actually dropped down to 32 degrees and stayed there. And I just pulled it out just a few moments ago. So um, as soon as I screw this back in, sorry I'm off camera with you guys there. I'll flip it around and we'll take a look at some of those results. Here we go. Let's check temperature. All right, it's risen up to 81 degrees, it says, 82. That's probably about the correct temperature in the room right now. Seems to be continuing to climb, though, and the watch feels a little cool. So I'm not sure about the temperature, whether it's going to be accurate or not. However, when I go in here to the altimeter, which I calibrated a while ago. Yeah, okay, it reset itself when I had to reboot the phone. But it was reading accurately within, I'd say, plus or minus 10 feet of my current altitude from the uh, setting altitude. It was about around 300 feet, and that's pretty close to accurate in terms of how high it went up. We also have the barometric pressure. And this has been moderately changing, which is true of barometric pressure. It was about 1,008, now it's 1,005. So one thing about this watch is it has a lot of interesting stuff you don't find on other watches. It also has a lot of the same things, sedentary reminders, sleep reminders, things like that. The um, camera, remote camera capability. And it has some deficiencies, which has to do with the phone calling. You only have access to your phone book. And although the software seems to allow you to answer the phone when it rings on your cell phone, you can answer it from your watch and it Bluetooth tethers over. The fact that there's no speaker in here makes it totally useless. You really have to grab your cell phone and switch it back to the cell phone to talk to somebody. You can hit the hang up button on your watch to hang it up. So you could use it during a workout probably to see who's calling, touch the button, and hang up on them. But other than that, you really don't have much use of it as a phone. It's a really nice um, outdoors watch, it looks like. It does say in the description it's waterproof, but I don't have any information in terms of whether it could really be submerged or not. I'm a little concerned when we took it apart and saw that that button that just goes in and out goes right into an open space and hits a, uh, a button on the inside. And, and that hole right there, unless they're protected, there could be water intrusion there. But everything else, including here, is sealed nicely. There's no antennas in the band. You should be able to take the bands off and carry it in your pocket if you'd like. And, of course, the whole reason that I brought it in in the first place is because it's got an accurate compass in it. And that is rare on one of these smartwatches. So, once again, you are looking at light in the box who has uh, joined us in providing watches for our review. This is the N10, looks like the N10B from the, uh, the information here. I'll look in the show notes for a link, and if I get a coupon price from them to give you a discount, we will include that as well. And thank you again for watching our channel on smartwatches.